What's going on? Welcome to another edition of Every Man is a Millionaire. Today, we're going to talk about that thing that everybody wants, passive income. I'm going to tell you the truth about passive income. I'm going to tell you how to get passive income. And I'm going to teach you or tell you or inform you or literally point you in the right direction on how to get short term and long term passive income and active income. So sit tight and prepare to have your socks blown off. While you're here, do me a solid. YouTube does not send everyone that subscribes to the channel a notification, even if you tickle that bell. So what I want you to do is go below, get on my text notification list, and I will send you a notification every time I upload a video or do a live stream. So with that, let's get into the content. Everyone is looking for passive income. Everyone is looking for more money. It's safe to assume that. However, the ways that we go about getting that income and money can be very, very different. It can be somewhat of a chore. And also, if this is your first time at the channel, this is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. What we do here is we get rich, we develop wealth through entrepreneurship and everything that comes along with that. We talk about money. We talk about checking accounts. Yes, I know it's boring, but it's very, very important. So we talk about all things related to how to start a business and get your wealth up. Now, let's talk about this passive income. I've had passive income in various points of my life. The longest period that I had appreciated passive income, and this means that I did something one time, I wrote a book, then I had money coming in for almost three years. And for about two years, my money kept going up, 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 and up. Did maybe one or two videos a week on YouTube, and I was making way more than livable income. I was essentially retired. I, matter of fact, I still run my life like that. I go to the bank. I go to the bank between the hours of 10 and 11. Why? Because <laughs> there ain't nobody in there but those old folks. I go to the store during the middle of the day because there's no one in there but the old folks. I just got accustomed to handling my business and not fighting crowds. But that's neither here nor there. This is the big thing that very few people are going to tell you about passive income. If you can get it, more than likely it's going to be short term. I know a guy that wrote a book. He had passive income for 16 years. And the reason he had passive income for 16 years is because his book was taught in school. So it became a textbook. But typically... You have some writers who write really good books and they'll make money for decades off that book. So that's one way for you to get some long term passive income is to create something. Typically, if you do something that's trendy, you do something that's now you can develop passive income, but it's going to be short term. I'm going to teach you how to develop long term passive income. First thing is you got to build some. That's yours. Uh, as long as you are bridging off of what someone else has done, your income could always be a little funny. It could be a little dark. It could be a little short term because you are leveraging someone else's assets or platform. So what you want to do is create a brand. Which means you need to start a business, which means for about four to 10 years, maybe 15 years, you'll be in the process of developing active income. Active income is usually better than passive income in many situations, unless you have a very large real estate portfolio where the property's all paid off and you can have a lot of money coming in. But typically outside of real estate, outside of music royalties, outside of intellectual property, um, typically anything else that gets you passive income is going to be short term. 
Now, going back to the long term passive income, you want to create a company. You want to brand your company. You want to work very, very hard in your company. OK. To get it to the point where. You can hire people to manage it. Now, this is going to be a very tricky situation because during those whatever ramp up period, you're going to be this company is going to be like your baby. It's going to be very hard for you to let it go. So this is why you need to have a written plan of once this company gets to a certain level, I'm out. You want to have a succession plan. You want to have it set up where you're going to hire people, put them in and pay them very well. Because let's say you got a company, small company does 10 million a year. And after tax profit is about three million. Maybe four if you really got some good margins. You can afford to pay a CEO $500,000. You see where I'm going with this? So you got it because this is going to be the key. You got to get them trapped. So let's say you're in year 20. You know, many people are telling you, sell the business, sell the business, get an exit, get the exit. Right. And turn that business into a lump sum of cash. I don't think that's going to be the best thing because typically, unless you're going to take all this money and buy real estate, pay cash for it, fine. All right, take the cash. But if you're going to do something like play around in the stock market, I would have second thoughts because let's say you sell your company, you're 20 years old, the company has good margins and you're doing 10 million. So you should be able to sell it for 20 to 30 million. So after your capital gains, taxes and other stuff, um, you should have... Let's say you sell for 20, you should have about 15 million. Maybe just depends on how your company's structured. Don't carve these numbers in stone because people want, I want definitive numbers, man. I want definitive numbers. There ain't nothing definitive in life except you're going to die one day. But other than that, you, you got your 20 million, you got your 15, you know, let's, let's go ahead and say the government really rapes you. And that leaves you about 12, maybe 13 million. If you take all of that money and you put it in real estate, you may be okay because it doesn't matter if you win or lose, you still have paid off real estate and that that can be some serious, serious returns. It could be greater returns to the stock market. Now you do that. And if you don't put in real estate, let's say you become quote an investor and you start spending money off into other people's projects. Um, You could lose all your money. I'm just saying now, once again, if you're going to buy real estate, cool. If you're not going to do real estate, rethink your plans. Now, I rather you kept the company because see, you keep the company. Then this happens. You can step away from the company, find a good team. You don't want one person. You want a team of three to maybe five people who know the company because you'll still be part of it. But instead of you showing up into the office every day, you could show up in the office once a week or once every once a few, maybe once a month or once every two weeks. So this leaves you with active income. You can travel the world. You can um, take care of your kids. You You can do whatever you want. That's my retirement. I'm not going to have, quote, an exit. Uh, The way that I'm setting up my companies, I'm not setting them up to sell. I'm setting them up to leave to my kids. And if they can't handle it, I'm going to have to get a management team and they will have they won't get any money when they're young. Because, you know, if they don't come into the company and learn how to run it, they'll get some later in life. But any way you look at it, I'm going to be in a situation where I can be 70, I could be 80, I could be 90. I'm going to have active income coming in because I'm going to have a company out there getting it. And one of the ways to ensure that your company will live a long, long, long time, be very judicious with your debt load. Be very careful with your debt load in the early stages. You know, you having the debt. That's cool. But as you get to the point where you want to walk away, what you want to do is get as rid of all your debt if you can and get to the point even if the company takes a hit and it's not producing as much cash as it once did, let's say, you know, when you're humping it, 
you was doing 10 million a year and now once you take a lot of money and you pay everything off and the company does like seven eight million a year you have no debt and you get a check every month for 100 g's i think you can have a very good retirement on 100 g's because uh, one of the reasons that i don't think that the passive income model is going to be very good for the future is there's a few things that are going to come and we have to get futuristic here they're going to be able to grow you new lungs if your heart gets defective they're going to be able to grow you a new heart um we're going to have people i estimate in our lifetime living to be 120 130 and they're not going to start looking really old until they're about 90 95 maybe 100 and then, you know, toward they get towards their life cycle, they're, they're, they'll start looking older. So all of this stuff that's coming out that will keep you younger, keep you healthy. It's going to cost a lot of money. So if you're just planning your retirement where you are just going to deteriorate and become decrepit and stuff. OK, fine. But if you're planning an active retirement and I'm telling you, you're going to read, pick up the newspaper or pick up your iPad or whatever people are reading the, the news on in the future. And you're going to see this 95 year old dude and this 75 year old woman have a kid. And that kid's going to be healthy because they don't look 95 and they don't look 75. So everything's going to change. And what's going to happen is the people with money are going to get these goodies. So if you're just saving for a meager, uh, sparse, Spartan retirement, you may live to regret it. So this is why you want to have as much money as you can. And the way to do it is to have a company. And this is the good thing. Let's say you don't know what you want to do. You got years to, you know, three, four or five years to experiment because the long term goal is, is to create a company. Make a lot of money when you're running the company and possibly make even more money when you step away from the company. Now, that's the kind of passive income that I'm looking at, because when I wrote my book and I was making all that money, I was like, good Lord, who knew? But the thing is, this is where I went wrong. I was writing a lot of books. If I could go back and do it again, I would have written 35, 40 books because I probably would have had three to six that would have popped and would have been continually selling. But I only wrote one book, well, one, well, two, uh, Storage Unit Auctions A to Z and Pimping Craigslist. They did really well for many years. And they still sell. They just don't sell at the level that they did to sustain me. I mean, I might get a check from Amazon for two or three hundred bucks, four hundred bucks, something like that. And that's real passive income. That's what you're going to look at with real passive income. Typically, it's going to be low unless you can get a situation where someone buys your company and they have a, like a 10 year payment plan and they are cranking you out of checks uh, a million a year. That's a form of passive income. But anyway, you look at it, you got to build something because I'm, I'm getting ready to tell you something like everyone's talking about the stock market. You know, the average investor doesn't make money in the stock market. The average person, I don't care if you have a 401k or Roth IRA, whatever you have, I don't really care. You're not making that much money because those investment vehicles require you to put money in. And the earlier you start, the better you are off. But let's say you're 62, you want to retire and the market's down. Guess what? You're screwed. But if you build a company, manage your debt levels. Instead of you going on 10 vacations, you go on five. See, the way it is, because once again, this is what I learned from passive income. You can't really depend on it because when my passive income started to drop, it wasn't a gradual decline. It was like someone turned a spigot and turned the water off. It was just that fast. So if you've got a passive income situation, and as many retirees and many stockholders and many of these people who had these pension plans, they're finding out that these companies have run out of money and they're hurt. You know, you're 72 years old and here comes someone saying, I'm sorry, Mr. So-and-so. But, yeah, I know you were getting twenty five hundred a month, but we're going to have to cut your benefits in half. You're 72. You don't have any more money. You don't have your youth. You don't have your vigor. You can't go out there and get it. Uh, there was this situation with this guy. He lost his house. He started I think he was 79 or something. He started driving a truck. 
so he could pay his wife's medical bills. I forget, but he was not, I mean, he 79 or 80 some years old driving a truck to pay his wife's medical bills. See, this is one of the problems that many people are going to start to face. They're going to outlive their money. Uh, right now, I uh, was reading some statistics. If you make it to 70, more than likely you're going to make it to 80 to 90. That's the thing, because once you cross 70, a lot of things that were going to happen have happened already. Are you fixed? And so that's that's a magic number. And we're going to have a look. How many of your grandmothers and aunties and uncles and stuff? They're in their 80s. They're in their 90s. They're in pretty good health. What's their problem? They don't have enough money. So this is my thing. Let's passive income is real. I think you can get sixty thousand dollars a year right now, but. I just don't have a lot of faith or trust in anything that's like, OK, you build this thing, you don't touch it and it just churns off money forever. I, I don't I don't see that. I think you'll have a lot of short term passive income like uh, my courses. My courses did really well and then they started to taper off everything, everything, TV shows, radio show. Everything's going to have a taper off period. And you're going to have to refresh it, which means you're going to have to be active. <laughs> See, because you can get passive income. Like I said, I have true passive income between my sale of my books on Amazon. I have an AdSense and a super good month is two grand, maybe three when the holidays hit. And right now I haven't really even focused on AdSense. A lot of my videos don't even have AdSense on them. Because I'm looking at the bigger picture. I'm looking at building this company and I'm giving myself, you know, I'm 51 years old right now and I'm giving myself 10 years to build this company. Because I'll make plenty of money while I build it. And once I get it built a certain way and uh, one of the ways you can look at this business model and you, you're going to love this. That's the way Jeff Bezos built Amazon. He did not do anything short term and he got punished. He was laughed at. He was mocked. Amazon, this Amazon hadn't made any money, right? But he's built his company to last a very long time. And that's what you can do on a smaller level. You could build a donut shop. And let me tell you how you can do it. Find you a good location. Go down to the civic board and see what the future projections are for neighborhoods and stuff. And if it's in a really good location and you have to pay a premium for the real estate, pay it. Pay the premium, get that building paid off, and you that's going to be the key because that's going to be your biggest expense. It's going to be your rent or the mortgage on that building. And there's some stuff we'll talk about in H undergrad on that. But get it paid off and just hire someone to bake those donuts. And you could probably have a shop that's making six to eight thousand dollars a month after expenses. And you could be 90 years old and you're still collecting your Social Security. If you got a 401k, you're still collecting that. But active income is going to kick passive income in the butt day in and day out. And you got so many people who are just trying to throw something together to get some passive income when they have not built anything that is noteworthy and remarkable. Uh, my first book was noteworthy and remarkable, and that's why it made so much money. And even with that, it still petered off. It still tapered down. I remember when it was going down, I had my my last good month because it was still going down. I did about thirty eight grand. Then the next month it went to twenty. Then the next month it went down to fifteen. And then the next month it was a few hundred bucks. It was just like that. It was just like, whoosh, boom. And one of the things that you guys should do, and we'll talk about this, is get into demographics and market research. It's going to be very, very telling because uh, the next generation that's going to be the super huge is the millennials. It's the biggest generation we've ever had. And then you throw in the immigration situation. It's going to be a lot of people looking for housing. There's going to be a lot of people looking for services. There's going to be there's going to be a lot of stuff. So get, become very market research driven because I don't care if you're selling donuts. I don't care if you're selling books. I don't care if you're selling nails. You got to sell it to people. 
So you got to look at where the people are and where the people's needs are going to go and put your business together to get that money. So that's all I got for you guys. So what I want you to do once again is go below, sign up for the text notification. And if you're ready, enroll in Hustler Undergrad. It's 300 bucks per month for 30 months. Yes, that's uh, $9,000. And before you finish paying it, you will have a up and running hustle that will be able to pay your payments. How cool is that? Uh, right now, we're working on foundational work, which means you will be spending money and not making money. It's necessary. It's delayed gratification. When I built this YouTube channel, I didn't make any money for about six months. Nothing. And to set a firm foundation for your business, to set a firm foundation for anything, that's what you're going to have to do. All right. So talk to you guys later. Let me know what your comments and thoughts about passive income, active income and all that other jazz. And I will see you guys very soon.